All right, I'd like to show you a pretty versatile fly here. Um, if you follow some of my stuff, you've probably seen I do a lot of golden stones. This is going to be a golden stone with a little bit more flash to it, some rubber legs. And, you know, obviously it's for trout, and it certainly crushes trout, but I uh, I really don't use it for that all that much. This is more of a steelhead fly for me, but that's really just blind preference. It absolutely can be used for trout, anything that you want. Um, it's a really great fly, heavily weighted, and uh, I've, I've had some pretty good success with it. So in the vise, we've got a size 10 curved nymph hook. My bead is going to be a matte Almond Joy Firehole Stone 3.5 millimeter. The weight is going to be a 0 .020 lead-free wire. And my thread, I'm using 10-aught Vivas. I really love Vivas for a lot of reasons, but it gives you a lot of strength. doesn't really build up a huge bit of bulk. So we're going to start by starting our thread and securing our lead wire, or lead-free wire. And I do that by running my thread through the gaps and then doubling it back over and pulling it towards the front and really locking it and cinching it in there. You know, a lot of people use glue and, you know, that's fine if that's your thing, but I really don't use a lot of glue. I, I think that it's really just completely, utterly pointless, but... You know, I know to each their own. That's one of the cool things about fly tying. If that's what you're comfortable doing, then have at it. I'm really big on that kind of stuff and big on confidence flies. And so I will not begrudge anybody using glue. And I laid down a thread underbody and I'm doubling it back up and I'm going to bring it even back down for a third time. And the reason why I'm doing this, the triple, the triple underbody is, believe me, before I even explain this, trust me, this really does not matter. The fish absolutely do not care, but it's a look that I prefer. Uh, if you ever look at a stonefly, they've got a little bit more width to their body, and unlike a mayfly nymph, their, their tail fibers don't splay out the way you normally see with a mayfly nymph. They're kind of coming off the back of their body and sticking straight out, so I like to build a little bit of bulk on the sides when I do a stonefly. But as I said before, really, really does not matter. It's just my own personal look. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of confidence flies. I've always believed if you're fishing a fly that you have confidence in, you know that it works, you trust it, I think you're going to fish more effectively. You're going to be more attentive. You're going you're gonna to just do a lot better. So that's always what I've believed. So I'm taking a couple of brown biots here, and I'm tying them in. One by one, I don't tie my biots in two at a time. I've, I've tried that many times. I've just never really been able to nail that technique. So I always do my biots one at a time. I actually kind of envy people when they just take two of them and cinch them in and they look perfect. And I just, I've just never really been able to nail that. So I take them one by one. Make sure I get them exactly where I want them, at the angle I want them. And I cinch them in. I also want to point out too that these are not goose biots. I know goose biots tend to be the standard that most people use for their nymphs. I find goose biots to be a little oversized. So, I mean, a lot of times, you know, if you look online at a uh, at a video of, you know, like a Copper John or something like that, you know, a lot of times those biots are big, thick. And, and if you look at an actual nymph, you know, you don't ever see a situation where the, the nymph is dominated by the size of its tail. It just doesn't make any sense. So I've never really done that. Okay, so we got everything all prepped and ready. Our tail's all good. So, what I want to do here is I want to build up a little bit of a, a little bit of bulk on the underbody. So I'm going to create a tapered thread underbody with my thread. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go down the shank about a third of the way, and then I'm going to double back. And now I'm going to go down with touching wraps about two thirds of the way, and then double back on that. Just try to build up as much bulk, and it doesn't have to be smooth or anything like that. We're going to cover all this in dubbing, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to take a third pass down, and this time I'm going all the way down to the bottom, right where my tail is. Okay, next thing I'm going to tie in, I am going to take one of these brown turkey biots. And these biots are obviously significantly longer than goose or duck. And if, 
the end point here, this skinny stuff, that's gonna, first of all, this buyout's gonna go on the top of the body. Uh, the skinny stuff is way, way too small. It's, it's not what I want. So I'm gonna use this part of the buyout as my tie-in. So I'm just gonna lay that flat on the back of my hook, put the pressure right on the back, nice loose wrap so I don't coil it all up, and just cinch that in there with one wrap. Now on my way back up, I want to get my wire in there. Wire is really easy to tie when you're going from back to front. So I always like to take that opportunity to get that material tied in. You can't see the point. Not that it matters. Eh, it doesn't matter. So now I'm just going to work my way back to the front, securing in everything that I just tied in. And as I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be smooth. You're going to be covering this with dubbing, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Speaking of dubbing, the dubbing that I like to use for this fly, I don't know how well that will come through in the camera, but that's basically what it looks like. It is a golden stone dubbing, and it's made by Awesome Possum. And I'd show you the, I'd show you the container and what it actually looks like, but I, I put all my dubbing in, in this dispenser here, so... I don't really have the package. I do have more packages down in my drawer, right? When I buy this stuff, I buy them, you know, five, six packages at a time. Because every golden stone that I tie, this is the dubbing that I use. I could dig out one of those packages and show you, but apparently I'm not as prepared as I should be to film this video. And if you're watching this, I don't think you're watching this to listen to me rummage through my stuff. So we won't do it. All right, so we are going to start dubbing this body with some tight wraps. And as I move my way up, I'm going to start building up my taper. I don't, I, I'm not making a very long dubbing noodle because if I do, as I come around, it, it hits my white backdrop, so I'm going to have to stop a couple times and redub, but that's the way it goes sometimes. So we're just going to keep an eye on that taper as we move our way up. The, uh, the underbody will certainly help with that, but if you need to fill in some inconsistencies with, with your dubbing noodle, that's the whole point of doing a nice thin noodle. Now, some people make their dubbing noodles where they, you know, they build up the taper themselves. And that's that's cool. That's a great technique. And I have tried it a few times, but you need to nail the amount of dubbing. You got to have everything perfect for that to really work. And, you know, sometimes I, I, I try to accomplish a particular look with my flies. And if I'm not getting that, I'm not too happy. So I want to make sure that I'm, you know, doing it the way that I want. So there's a nice taper, there's a nice dubbed body, pretty much everything that we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dubbing brush here, and I'm just going to take the tip of it, and I'm just going to pick at this a little bit. Now if you wanted to, with most flies, you can take this entire tool, put it right on there, really beat the crap out of this and pull out a ton of dubbing. But I don't really want to do that with this, because you know if you look at a stonefly, they're not really that buggy they're kind of like rock solid and armored and you know they're they're kind of they're not really like mayfly nymphs they, they look different act different so i don't go too crazy with the teasing out of the dubbing and making this super buggy but it, it does it does help to at least get it a little bit so i'm going to take this by out i'm going to fold it right over the top get that nice and centered looks good right there and i'm just going to hold it in place while I get a nice loose wrap and then start to tighten that down and get that position where it's not going anywhere. Get that out of there. Okay, so we have to secure that with the wire. I'm going to do this a certain way and it's not exactly rocket science, so no big deal. But if I come over the top of this and I really push it hard, as I go towards the back, I'm going to start pushing my baya off center, and I don't want to do that. So when I come over the top, I'm going to go real light, 
and I'm not going to apply pressure until my until I'm bringing it straight down. Now I'm going to apply pressure and lock it in. Keep my keep it tight. Then when I encounter the biot, loosen it up, go nice and soft over the top, and then wrench it down on the way down. And we're going to do that all the way up with even touching wraps. And again, the reason why I do that is if I'm if I'm pushing towards away from the camera with that wire, I'm really going to slide that biot out of place and that's not what I want to happen. So I'm going to move my thread back a little as I come up. I'm going to catch it with my thread. Get that secured. And we're good. So I'll helicopter that off. Jeez, or at least try to. That didn't want to come off. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. Nice centered biot. Tail's coming off the way that we want. Everything's kind of looking good the way we want it to look. All right, now, I am going to put a little bit of flash on this fly. You don't have to. And I, I, I usually tie evenly some with flash, some without. So I got some of this holographic tinsel here. And I'm going to lay that right on my thorax. Anytime you put flash on a fly, you got to put that down first so that when you fold it over, it's on top. Next order of business, I'm going to take this turkey tail here, this cinnamon tip turkey tail. This is what I use for all of my stonefly wing cases. And I'm going to snip off a chunk of, I don't know, 8 to 10 fibers or so. Now normally, with a fiber that long, I'm making multiple flies with that, and, and I'm going to. I'm just not going to obviously do that in the video. But I'm going to lay this flat right over the top and make sure that it's even and centered and grab it on both sides. And I know that's going to make a tent and put the peak on the top, but it really doesn't matter. We'll fix that in a minute. So a nice loose wrap, two, and then tighten it. Now the reason why I do two loose wraps is I want that centered over the top. <clears throat> and if I go in right away real hard, I'm going to start sliding it over and that it's, it's going to end up laying in a spot that I don't want it to lay in. So I always start with a nice loose wrap and then tighten it and that kind of holds everything in place. So we'll go down towards the front, get that secured in. I got to start filling in some of this space here at the head too. So I'll run some wraps in there. I like to have the thorax of my flies to be more dubbing, or I'm sorry, more thread than anything. You know, more dubbing just, you know, that's going to absorb water, that's going to affect the sink rate. So I like to make sure that everything is rock solid up front. And I'm not over dubbing the hell out of this. So. Okay, so with my thread in the middle of the thorax, Next thing I'm going to tie in are my legs. And my legs are going to be these flat pumpkin green and orange. And that might seem like a weird color combination because it is. And it's certainly not the color combination that I that I planned to use on this fly. But when I first made this fly, and I shy away from the word invented, I, I might have invented this in my own head, but I believe that most of pretty much everything in fly tying has been done, so I try to shy away from, hey, I invented this fly. Well, I'm sure there's somebody that can post up a picture of somebody that's already done this, so I just kind of don't go that route. But when I was making this, I was kind of looking around like, hey, what do I have available? The only thing I really had available was this color, and it wasn't until I actually put it on that I was like, oh, wow, this actually looks really good. So pumpkin green and orange. And it kind of matches the fly pretty well, and it's got some flash built into it. So this is a really sparkly fly. So if you got a nice sunny day, this could make the difference. Now for the legs, if I cinch the hell out of this right now, right away, then what's going to happen with these things is they're just going to kind of flare out, and I don't really want that to happen. I want them to lay a little bit more straight. So same thing. I'm going to do a couple of loose wraps above and below the legs. 
And once I do that, I can return to my original tie in point and now really cinch them down. And when you do that, it won't splay your legs out like crazy. So that's kind of the look that I'm looking for here. Now, the next step is probably the only step in this fly that's a little bit of a pain, and that's working around the legs to get your dubbing in there. Not the worst thing in the world, but it is a little annoying. So we're going to throw a good amount of dubbing in our thread. And while I'm putting the dubbing on, I, I will say too that th this isn't really that complicated of a fly to tie. It, it is pretty, it is pretty standard. You know, it's tied in the same general method that most nymphs are tied in, without anything extra. So it is fairly easy. No matter what your skill level is, this is a fly that you should be able to master and get down pretty easily. And for as effective as it is. It's definitely worth tying a few up. In fact, as soon as this video is done, I'm going to head out and do a little winter fishing. And this fly is coming with me. So we'll see what happens. Not steelhead. I'm going to hit a local creek. It's got some good browns in it, and I fish it in the winter quite a bit. So we'll fold those back. Get some wraps in front. Just a little bit more dubbing. Yeah, I'm up here in upstate New York, and we've got a nice clear day creeping almost into the 40s. Should be nice and comfortable, and that sun's going to beat down on that water, heat it up just enough to where I'm hoping we can get some fish moving a little bit. So we'll see how that all goes. But this fly, literally the, this fly, as in the one that I'm currently tying, will be my weapon of choice. Okay, so we're all pretty good there. So I am going to take my turkey. I'm going to fold that over the top. And I'm going to get that secured. And get that locked right in there. I'm going to fold my tinsel over the top. i got to maneuver that a little bit. So we'll get that right over the top. It's always a tough step with the camera in my way. Nice thick wing case. I do like very prominent wing cases. I like to make sure that there's that separation there. Again, it's just one of those preference things. You know, if you're if you're not tying a fly that way, you're you know I'm, neither one of us are going to outfish each other. It's, it's no big thing. It's just my personal preference. Okay, so let's get the scissors in there. We'll get that cut off as closely as we can. Get some of those fibers out of the way. I don't like having those fibers stick up like that because I am going to put some resin on this wing case. And when there's loose fibers like that, you can actually see it kind of making some points in the resin, and I don't like that either. My tying pet peeves are a common theme of these videos. So I'm going to take a tiny little bit of dubbing, nice and thin. I'm basically at the whip, the whip finish step, but I don't. I want to make sure that this is dubbed all the way to the bead. I don't want there to be that thread gap there. You can see the thread right there. I want to cover that. So we're going to cover it with a couple of loose wraps. And then instead of taking more wraps, I'm going to get my whip finish tool. And I am going to cover that with the first couple turns of my whip finish. And what will happen is... And this is part of the reason why I use a thread like Vivis, because the strength of the thread allows you to really winch down on that. And what it'll do is, what it'll happen is when you do that, the knot will slip in behind the bead and you won't see it at all. It gives you a nice clean finish. Uh, that's why I like to make sure that whatever whatever thread I'm using on a, on a beaded nymph, 
and make sure that it's really strong for that last step. Now, I'm going to take some of my Solares and I'm going to put a resin wing case on this fly to finish it up. So I'm going to start that right here at the base of my wing case. Come on, I just don't want a big blast of it to fly out. So there we go. And I'm going to move my way all the way to the front with this. Got to add some on the sides. And I'll tell you, this is this is rock solid, really, really strong stuff. I never realized how strong this stuff was, uh, but I tied one of these flies and kind of screwed it up and had to take it apart. And man, was it hard to get through this resin. I put a little too much on there. I'm trying to trying to eat lighten that up a little bit. Need something to wipe this on. Need some extra material. See what I mean about the dubbing? I, I caught a little bit of it in the back here, and you can see strands of it sticking out. And when you do that, that kind of makes it look like crap. And I'm kind of mad that that happened. I'm not. Let me see if I can grab just that. This is a uh, one of those little annoyances that again will not affect its performance, and the fish certainly don't care either. But I do get a little particular about my flies, and I don't like these kind of mistakes. So I'm not too happy about this, but honestly, it doesn't really affect much, and it's not worth redoing the whole video for, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to fill in that little gap right there. There's a little hump right there that can use a little dot. Putting a resin wing case is not as complicated as I just made it, but sometimes that happens. All right, so let's turn these lights off. Let's get that cured up. Now, one of the things I want to point out while I'm curing this, you can probably see the purple tip on my torch here. I always use this small torch that I've had, and I've used it for years, and it works great. Um, but I won a Solares package at the International Fly Tying Symposium last year, and it came with three different types of Solares, and it came with this torch. And I'll, I'll tell you, this, this torch right here, made by Solares, you have got to take a couple extra bucks and invest in it. Um, as much as I loved my other torch, I, I would always have to take my flies and like leave them in the windowsill for a day or so. Um, but this thing, this this is much more powerful, much more stronger beam on it. And uh, it locks that stuff up rock solid. Like that right now is rock solid without a drop of tack to it at all. Um, so I would definitely take a couple of extra bucks. Invest in one of those Solares UV curing lights. If you work with resin, you'll be very, very happy that you did. Cannot believe how much better it works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my legs tight. Even them out. Snip them at the same time so they're nice and even. And that is pretty much going to do it. That is what we're looking for. That is a flashy, heavy, heavily weighted golden stone fly with a little bit of flash. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is a really, really big steelhead fly for me. Um, I, use it, I use it a ton. Um, I don't know if you can see it in here, but here's my steelhead box. A bunch of them in there up in the top right there. So... I load my steelhead box up with these, use them quite a bit. They're one of my best flies. Uh, but again, as I said in the beginning, this can absolutely be used for trout. I've, I've caught trout with it. Um, I don't use it as much, but it's, it is it is in my box, so sometimes I grab one and uh, works fantastic. So give it a try. If you have any questions or anything, just leave whatever in the comments. Comments. I try to respond to whatever it is that I see. So appreciate you watching. Tie a few of these up. They're pretty simple, and they'll definitely work for you.